Hey guys, Common Sense Outdoorsman here. I wanted to show you this other slip joint knife that I have. And I, I have a lot, but I'm going to start to do more and more um, folding knives, slip joints, you know, whatever. All kinds of knife locks, so on and so forth. But this is another slip joint, no lock on this one. And this is a Rough Rider. And you may have seen this one. Actually, a beautiful knife. And I, I know it's made in China. I know it, so... Whatever you think about that, you think about that. That's fine. Um, but um, so this, they call it a uh, stag bone um, hunter. And that's not real stag bone. That's probably cow bone. But it is <laughs> kind of beautiful nonetheless. Okay. Well made. Sort of like that last marbles that I did. Um, sorry, guys. It's a little dark. The... Uh, Sun has been slipping away, and um, there's a couple of raindrops going on right now. But um, this nice shield too. Look how they put the shield in there. I um, good job. Looks cool. Okay, and markings on the um, nickel silver bolsters. Okay, very nicely done. Um, fairly well put together. I don't have any complaints. And the model of this one is, see if I can find it on here. This is the RR1804, 1804. And they call this the hunter knife as far as I remember. It's got two uh, blades. They do have half stops. Okay. Love to have the half stops. Not the end of the world if they don't, but it's a nice, nice touch. It does have the uh, matchstick poles on it, and there's two of them. Is it on? Yeah, two of them on each blade, which is nice. Nice. So it's a lot easier to pull it from closer to the blade tip. Um, 440A steel. Um, Rough Riders 440A steel. I've got several Rough Riders in my experience. Pretty good stuff. They do a good job um, heat treating it. So, um, oh, you can see the reflection of my phone. Great. Um, but very well done. Very sturdy. There's no blade play at all. The springs are done um, very well. It's about the uh, right tension for this kind of a knife. There's the clip point. Let's compare it in size real quick to the one everyone knows, the Buck 110. I'm going to put this down a little bit more. I don't really want to look at my face so much, I'm sure. Um, so it's a little bit longer than the Buck 110, okay? There's the um, width on the handle. Okay, do the best I can here. I'm just standing up in the in the woods. Uh, of course, the 110 is a lock back, so I'm not comparing necessarily functionality. This is just size. And I think the 110 blade is a little bit thicker than the Rough Rider. Okay. Give you a close-up of the actual blades here if I can do this right. I like the shape of the cutting edge on the 110 better than I do the Rough Rider. Okay, but they're similar. Okay, so just as a size reference, I really don't want to... My intent isn't to compare these two, but just talking about the uh, Rough Rider knife. Okay, um, they're putting out some good knives, have a lot of different uh, patterns and styles. It's a good shot of the clip point blade. Um, I like them very much. This edge, I'll be honest, it came sharp. I, it's a little thick for me, so I am going to take it down. And when I do that, I just simply use my um, diamond plate and see if I can show you this. And, and I just you know, do this motion. And once you learn to do this, it's very easy, very effective. Kind of, you can do circular motions 
whatever. I have videos on sharpening knives like this and check them out. They're long winded, but I think they're good information. Okay, so this one needs a little bit more work to get the edge the way I like it, but um, I'm going to work on that. But anyways, uh, it is sharp. It did come uh, decently sharp. You can make curls with it. Um, it's a big knife, no doubt about it. I'm going to say it weighs a little bit less than the Buck 110. The Buck 110, I think, is 7.2 ounces. I'm going to guess this one's somewhere around um, 6.5, maybe, you know, 6.8 inches, somewhere around there. Um, open both blades at once. So you can get a good look at both those blades. Let's do this. Well, it's not going to stay. Well, it'll stay like that. But um, very nice looking. And like I say that the imitation staghorn handles, they, they came out great. They did a good job with that. Okay. Um, I don't carry this knife a lot. And... Because of it is kind of big, it, if I needed a pocket knife, if I was going to take it out in the woods with me, um, even if I'm planning to use it, it's, it's for its type of knife, it's a little big, but it's useful, okay? It's comfortable in the hand, fits great. You've got a good size handle there to work with, not a problem. Yep. It's kind of skippy because, like I said, the edge for me is a little thick. It is sharp. I will correct that edge to suit me, guys. Nice sharpening. And, you know, that, how the edge comes, yeah, I expect it to be sharp and ready to go. But everybody likes their edges in a different way. So just learn to sharpen, learn how to take care of that. And uh, you can manipulate an edge, knife edge, the way you want it. That's understandable. You might have to do a little work to a knife. Inexpensive knives or more expensive knives. It doesn't matter. Sometimes you've got to do what you got to do. The tips on these blades are very sharp. They're pointy. They, they, they're ground well. No problems with the tips of these knives. Do a little palm test. Yep. No problems there. So yeah, guys, the Rough Rider 1804. Great knife. Um, I think I paid this one, and I can't remember where I got it. It might have been Knife Works or Knife Center, one of those. It could have been Chicago. Um, is it Chicago Knife Works? I don't remember. Um, you don't find these everywhere, and I don't know if Rough Rider is still making them. I think I paid about $25 for this one because they're not everywhere right now. But um, great knife. Hey, guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate you. Common Sense Outdoorsman. We'll talk to you next time. Bye.